Okay, so we're going to carve this little fox pendant today. I'm going to put a hole up in the top there somewhere. I might try and make it hidden actually. Uh, and I've got a few different woods here. I'm probably only going to carve with two of them. This is elm. It's got a beautiful grain in it. It's uh, probably medium hardness. And this is yew. It's a yew burl. I've had this for a while. It's um, got some amazing grains in it. Uh, that's black walnut, but I didn't actually get around to carving that one. So essentially what I'm going to do is transfer this onto the wood and then cut it out. Now you can cut it out roughly with a just a saw or you can do a scroll saw and go really close to the edges. Okay so you also want to choose a part of the grain that looks really cool and I've chosen it sort of to go sort of like a V shape on the front of the head but You've got to be careful because sometimes uh, if you choose the grain and it goes across those ears, it's going to be weak, which I kind of have done here, but I know that this elm is actually a really strong wood and should be all right. And I'm going to cut roughly around this little fox and use the Dremel to go up to the lines. But you can use a scroll saw, which I will do in the next carving, uh, to go right up to the lines. Okay, so you don't want to carve it like this. You want to carve it when it's flat down on a board that you don't really care too much about. And the trick is, so I'm using the Cutsall Extreme Burr here. The trick is just to nibble little bits away at it and go up to that line. And because, so, it, this is quite a small carving. And when you're using an Extreme Flame Burr on a small carving, it's exactly... Ex quite dangerous around your hands so you can sort of see my hands are quite far away from it and I am aware that if it's going to shoot off it's going to go upwards and around the work uh, but I'm not sort of being aggressive I'm just sort of slowly going into the work uh, taking little chunks out okay so you can sort of see in a sort of like a higher up part there I've got a sponge under the Dremel hand and I sort of like press down on that so there's not a lot of movement in the actual Dremel so if I was to lose control I've got my hand on the table so it's not going to shoot off too much so you've got more power in your hand I guess that's what you're saying it doesn't work for all carvings but a carving like this it's uh, really good to do that I also find like with that sponge uh, when I'm carving a long time I tend to put it under my elbow or something like that just so it takes makes it a little bit more comfortable in the long run. I know it sounds a little bit, uh, I don't know, uh, soft or something like that to do something like that. But when you're carving eight hours a day, you need to uh, look after yourself, I feel. And it's looking a little bit rough around the edges, but we're going to clean it up with the Cutsall Fine Taper Burr. The brilliant thing about this is you can sort of see I've lifted up the carving because the fine taper burr will hurt you, but not as much as the extreme burr. So uh, I just go around and slowly sort of take the wood up to that line. Don't be too worried about it though, because a lot of this wood is going to actually be carved away as we sort of shape the fox. Okay, so once you've finished those edges, you can see I have done not a perfect job there. Uh, and haven't quite gone up to the lines there but we'll sort that out so here I am and I'm started shaping with the Cutsall fine sphere burr the smallest one in the range and it's sort of a it's a really nice little burr because it sort of gets into these like concaves really well and it's really controllable and you can do convexes with it it's just you've got to sort of like be quick and go very lightly so once you've put the hollows in the ears, you sort of want to take the ears back as well. So it sort of moves back like that. And sort of sort of like refine things up. And you can sort of see I am sort of doing a convex here with a burr that's really made for concaves. And the trick is, is just go very, very lightly. It's a really great little burr, this one. I'm... I'm sort of like on these smaller carvings especially you've got to have a really light touch uh, don't be in a rush and it's just sort of like a peaceful thing to do just take off a little bit here and there 
uh, look at your carving uh, in every different way. So I'm sort of trying to make the ears rounder there. Now we're going to do the same for this bottom part of the face that goes into the nose. I'm going to round that off and it sort of forms a shadow at that top bit where the supposed eye is going to be. Um, this one is going to be a really simple carving. It's just going to be a few little shapes. And sometimes if you're selling carvings, that's the best thing to do because uh, they're quick to make. I don't tend to sell these kind of carvings. I, I do sell jewellery though, but it's a completely different uh, ball game than this kind of stuff. So, um, but I see a lot of these on Etsy and all of that, and they must sell quite well, I reckon. Um, so if you wanted to sell some at your local market or something like that, uh, once you can sort of get the hang of it, you can put in a few more little details, which I will in the next carving, and I'll show you that as well. But you can sort of see, uh, if I was going to make these to sell, I'd be concentrating on the type of wood I am carving. So this is a really nice one because it's got nice grain in it, and people respond well to those kind of things. And just keeping it simple. And you got to keep it the right size as well. Uh, so this is more of a sort of like a fox, but you could make a wolf as well if you made the uh, nose a bit wider I would say just look up on um, the internet there are a lot of these kind of carvings and on YouTube as well and a little bit of extra advice on selling these kind of things is you've got to be really you've got to concentrate on how it feels to the human touch so when you're finishing off these kind of objects you want to make it smooth and you don't want any sharp edges on it and you want to have the back smooth as well. So we are putting in the final touches in the shaping. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So you've got that middle part there. You can sort of see you could shape that as well a little bit. So the ear flows into the top of the eye. Uh, there's a whole different ways you could do this. Um, yeah. But uh, just take your time and just make, thing, make sure things kind of flow and look right. You might not get it right the first time, but um, if you're just following another carving to start off with and then sort of like change it uh, to your style. And so I started smoothing off the scratches with this burr. Didn't, it worked okay, but what I really wanted was a sphere burr. And then I actually remembered I did have a whole lot of sphere burrs. They are not as nice as this one in finishing, but uh, it's uh, they are a better shape. And if you end up with a little burn mark like that up in the top part of the ear, what you can do is you can slow your Dremel down and you can also go lighter with the Dremel and take it out that way and uh, just sort of lightly touch it and you can see, see it disappearing. Now if it was really burnt in there, you might want to go back to a rougher burr and then carve it back past the burn mark. But usually uh, you can get away with it by just using the diamond burr. And here you can see I'm sort of taking the edges of the carving back a little bit so there's no sort of sharp edges. This will also be taken back a little bit with a little bit of sanding at the end. And I used the soft sandpaper to sand back the little box. Sometimes I'll just put it down and then sand the front and then go in for sort of like details after that. Now if you've only got paper sandpaper you can do that as well. Sort of, uh, and you can do a little bit of shaping with the sandpaper as well just to get those fine lines in. Okay so if there's one thing I am really good at is putting holes in um, earrings and uh, pendants and I'm using a Dremel cutter burr for this uh, but uh, sometimes I forget that uh, maybe I don't know what I'm doing and things like this happen and it just spins away but it's all good because it's okay but uh, so I've gone in from the top and I've sort of gone straight down and now I'm going to go in from the back and just intersect that hole now what I like about this is there's not a hole in the front of the carving so it's sort of a little bit hidden Okay, so we're finishing off there, so I'll just string that up and put some beeswax on it. And uh, I will 
we've sort of finished off this yew wood fox as well. It's a tiny bit smaller than the other one. Uh, and I put some eyes in there and just a few more tiny little details, a little bit more shaping, I guess you would say. I'm putting a bit of beeswax on there. Uh, that always brings out the grain and it looks nice and makes it smell nice as well. So if you could hit that subscribe button or the like button, that would be awesome as well. And if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments and I will get back to you. Until next time, we will see you later. Bye.